Hey everyone, Scribble Mesh here with a quick tutorial on how to texture a stylized beer mug using mass generators in Substance Painter. So without further ado, let's jump right in and start painting. Before we import our model into Substance Painter, I want to free up some room for my layers window. So I'm going to move my texture set list window to the left side, as well as my properties window. To import our model and textures, let's go ahead and go to file and create new. And we're going to be using the PBR metalness roughness workflow on this. So let's go ahead and go to select and click uh, select our FBX file, which is the mug underscore render. And to import our textures, let's go click on the add and then find those textures. And we're going to go ahead and import these and then press OK. Once you have the model and textures in Substance Painter, go ahead under your shelf tab, go to textures and just search for mug to filter out just the ones we need. You can make the thumbnails bigger by clicking on this top right icon and clicking on large. And what we're going to do is we're going to slot in our textures on the right side where you can find this on the texture set settings. So first thing is the normal map. Let's go ahead and put that in. The world space normal is next. Then the ID map, which is the color map. Next is the ambient occlusion. Then the curvature. The position map. And then the thickness map. Once you have all those plugged in, we're ready to start texturing. Now I'm going to go to this top right tab right here. And then I'm going to choose for the environment map, the bus garage. Next, I'm going to go to my Layers tab. I'm going to delete this layer and then create a fill layer. And I can name this layer base. If you hold Control G, that should create a folder for you. And we can call this folder Wood. Now double click back on your base layer. And under the base color, let's go ahead and choose a saturated orange color. And for the roughness, we could put down around 0.4. Next, we're going to create color variation for the wood texture. So go ahead and create a new layer. We can go ahead and turn off the height, roughness, metal, and then normal map. And we're going to choose a more beige color. And we're going to use this as an overlay. So once you've chosen that color, go to your Layers tab and choose Overlay for that layer. And we're going to call this Saturation Blur. We're going to create a mask for this. So add a black mask. Then right click on that mask and choose Add Generator. Now this will open up um, in the Properties Generator tab. So go ahead and left click on that and select Mask Editor. Inside the Mask Editor, we can go ahead and increase our curvature op opacity to all the way to 1, then maybe our global contrast to 0.4, and then our global blur to around 0.1. Once you've done that, go ahead and turn on global invert. And now we have variation on the wood itself. Then the next thing we're going to do for the wood is add a sort of like a highlight on these edges. So go ahead and create a new fill layer and remove height, roughness, metalness, and normal map. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose a lighter value and a less saturated color. And once you've chosen that, we can go ahead and label this layer as wear blur. And we're going to create a black mask for this. Right click on it and add a generator. And we're going to do the same thing on the left side on the properties window. We're going to choose mask editor. Inside this mask editor, let's go ahead and adjust our contrast to around 0.7 and see how that looks. We could probably lower down the saturation and the value so it's not too strong. Next, we're going to add another wear layer where it um, really highlights these edges. So what we can do here is we can duplicate this wear blur by holding control and pressing D. And then we could just probably adjust this color to a more brighter color. Now, 
click on the mask itself and then delete that mask editor. We can call this where sharp right click on the mask and add a generator and then for the generator generator we're going to choose metal edge wear now it's a little crazy right now but we can go ahead and adjust that by lowering our wear level to around 0.5 and then maybe the contrast around 0.3 and the grunge amount turn it all the way to zero and then the scale maybe to point one or to one I mean for the edge smoothness we can do around two and now we're getting a lot more sharpness on some of these edges so now that we've finished with the highlights we're gonna add some darkness to the wood itself so let's go and create a new layer then we're going to remove the height roughness metalness and normal map we're going to choose a much darker orange for this and we're going to call this layer darken and we could also add a black mask to this layer and then once you have had the black mask go ahead and add a paint layer and we're going to start adding some of the shade into our mug where there's contact like the bottom part or some of the cracks. So if you go to your shelf window and go to brushes, and we could just go back to our medium thumbnail for this, we can choose basic soft and we can lower we can lower our flow to around four. Once you have that, we can start painting maybe some of this on the bottom part. And actually, before I forget, we can put this layer to overlay. And now we can start painting some of that darkness that we want. Just to give it some more interesting details. So I'm really using a, a really low flow because I don't want this to be hard or too much. So what I'm doing here is just darkening up the bottom part to build some interest to this so it doesn't look like it's a single color. And you can start doing it too on the contact of the handle and the, the base itself. Just so it has some, some sort of dirt. And maybe somewhere where the leather and the handle meet up. Somewhere in the bottom too. So it's re really subtle, not too much. And then let's put some around the, the contact of the rings. and then the bottom part as well. Now we could have used a smart mask for this, but I tested it where it felt like it was just too much or too hard without getting um, really control on how much you want on a certain area. So I find it the best way is just to paint it out really quick with a really low flow brush. And we could probably add some more on the top part too. So not spending too much time on it, but we want to make sure we get some interests in some of these areas. Cool. And there you have it. I think we're done with the wood part. Next, we're going to move on to the metal piece. To get started with the metal piece, we're going to go ahead and close this wood folder and then create a new folder. And we're going to call this metal. And inside that metal folder, let's go ahead and create a fill layer and add that to the metal. We can call that new layer base. And for the color itself, we're going to choose something around a very light color with a hint of blue on it. Make sure 
it's the metallic is all the way to one so it's it's reading off as metal and then for the roughness we could lower that to around 0.4 or 0.3 all right so we're gonna go ahead and add a a color selection for this metal so we're gonna add a mask with color selection and then choose that metal piece with the eyedrop so we're just masking out everything else and then we're just showing the metal bands inside this metal folder we're going to create another layer or we could just duplicate this base layer by holding control and pressing d and we're going to call this second coat and for this second coat we can go ahead and turn off the height and for the base layer base color we can lower that to around like 50 percent gray and for the roughness we could go even a little less to around 0.5 with that second coat layer selected, we're going to create a white mask. Then right click on the mask and add a generator. Click on the generator tab on the properties window and add a mask editor. Once you have that mask editor open, let's go and add a color contrast to this to around 0.6 and increase our curvature opacity to one. We could probably lower the, the global balance to around 0 0.06 and then turn off or turn on the global invert so you could see what's going on actually. So now we sort of have this this outer coat and then the inside of that metal piece so it's layered. We're going to add some rust to our metal, so we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. And we're going to call this rust. And then on our properties, we're going to turn off height and shift that to around like a dark red. Make sure it's in metallic and the roughness value to around 0.5. While you have the rust layer selected, let's go ahead and add a black mask. And then in your shelf tab, go down to smart masks and find the rust material and go ahead and add that to your mask. Once it's added, go ahead and click on the mask editor and inside this, go ahead and turn on the global invert and lower the or increase the curvature maybe to around 0.5 then lower the texture to to 0 then maybe lower the occlusion to around 0.4 and then the first texture to around 0.5 as well. Now we're just trying to add little bits of rust to that. And we can increase that just a little by putting the global ba balance to around 0.5 or 0.6. And then the contrast around 0.7. With the rust layer selected, Let's go ahead and duplicate that by holding control and pressing D. And we're going to call this rust paint. And what we're going to do is select our black mask and remove the mask editor. With that removed, go ahead and right click on that and add a paint layer. And what we're going to do here is we're going to start painting rust manually around the bolts and maybe some on the dents. So we're going to go in our shelf tab and then go under brushes and we're going to choose artistic heavy brush for this part. Let's go ahead and lower this shelf tab right here so we get more resolution. And we're going to lower our size quite a bit to around maybe five. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start painting and adding some of these rust manually. Okay, I'm just lowering my brush. I'm just adding in where I believe could have rust so here and then obviously in the in all of the bolts we're gonna add those some of the cracks and some of these dents and we're just gonna do this throughout the model and we don't want this to have too much so after we've done all the bolts, we're going to back out a bit on our camera and check how it's how it's looking from afar.
and we can adjust it from there. We can always add more paint and then just remove some of these later. I'm gonna back out and see how it's looking from afar. Maybe add some here. Okay, uh, don't forget to add some on the top side too. And if you press X, you could toggle between the white paint or black paint to remove some if you need to. With the metal rust finished, let's go ahead and close our metal folder since we're done with the metal. And we're going to create a new folder by clicking on this folder icon. And we're going to call this folder leather. And we're going to add a mask with color selection on this. So once you have that in, go ahead and color pick that blue color for our leather. And inside this folder, we're going to create a fill layer. I'm going to put that fill layer inside that leather folder and we'll call this base. And for the color, we're going to choose like a burgundy color to this, like a dark burgundy color. And we're going to lower the roughness around 0.4. With the base layer selected, let's go ahead and duplicate that by holding control and pressing D. And we'll call this curvature or curve. And we could adjust the color of this curvature layer to a higher value than the base and maybe shift it to around orange color. Next, we're going to add a mask. So we're going to add a black mask, then right click on that mask and add a generator. Then we're going to go ahead and add a mask generator. And let's just zoom in on this real quick. So under the mask editor, Let's go ahead and turn on our global contrast all the way up and the curvature opacity to one. Then we can start lowering down our global balance to maybe around 0.1. So we have that sharp edge and we're just getting the, the edges of that leather. And we could probably turn down this color a little bit lower so it's not too too harsh just more saturated and then the final thing we're going to do to the layer before we finish this whole texture is add a paint layer to this curvature and we're going to paint this manually and remove some that we don't want maybe we don't want some of these dots so we're just going to go ahead and remove them by using the black mask and make sure you're in the artistic heavy brush so it's nice and sharp. And if you just remove some of those. And then to add, go ahead and toggle to your white or press X. And just start adding some. And obviously in some of these some of these um, dents and cuts. Just doing this manually. Okay, and maybe some more here. Some there. So you can lower your brush if you need to to get a much sharper line. And then for the curvature itself, we can probably lower the roughness so it has a contrast between the base. Okay, and just continue on. And we're pretty much finished with the textures after this. So I just want to say thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned a lot from this quick tutorial on stylized painting using Substance Painter. I'm Scribble Mesh, and see you guys on the next tutorial.